it says light. Hold on, honey. Can you sit down? Good morning and welcome. Uh, I'm just going to bring things up here. As many of you will be familiar with. So I want to see how many people are actually. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Oh my gosh, we've got a few people already. That's wonderful, thank you. Let me begin then. Welcome. It is, uh, I'm so happy to have you all, all with us for this time of remembrance, of prayer, and reflection, as we uh, commemorate Good Friday. We are here in the sanctuary of Grace United Church, and I, I welcome you for that. This will be a, a service of reading of scripture and of prayer, a little bit of song, and more prayer. So I welcome you. And let us begin with this time of prayer now. Gracious God of grief and suffering, this Friday seems good for all the wrong reasons. Be with us in these hours as we gather in the shadow of the cross of Christ and hear again the story of death and the sounds of burial. This is not where we would choose to be, O God, brought face to face with this symbol of death and instrument of torture. Forgive us where we have sought to avoid such times, where we have ignored the cross or denied our own pain, or turned our backs on the suffering as, sufferings of others. Strengthen us to be there today, that we may know that you are here with us. You know the ways of the world, O oh God. You have been there. You are here. You have loved and cried and lived and died to be with us, to comfort us, to forgive us, and to free us. For this we give thanks. This we call good. Amen. And before we begin the song, I'll just make this note now that when the service comes to an end, after we sing Kyrie eleison, we'll have a moment of silence, and then we will close with no blessing or farewell. We'll just come, this, the service will just come to an end. So, thank you. Let us sing the fourth verse of Were You There? First reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 1 to 27. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across, across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and, when, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. 
Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus smiled, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them when Jesus said to them, I am he. They stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in it, into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the temple police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the religious authorities that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the, and in the temple where all the people come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of the disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked him, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed.
Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The temple authorities replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the temple authorities. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the temple authorities again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The chief priests answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, 
Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you, given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the chief priest cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench and at a place called the stone pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the people, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he, took, then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, King of the Jews, but... This man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. 
After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the temple authorities did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look at the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the temple authorities, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who at first, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of, of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Let us pray. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God may guide it and gather it together so that we may worship God in peace and tranquility.
God of power and love, you have shown your compassion in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the church. Help it to persevere in faith and to proclaim your name to people everywhere. Let us pray for our ministers, for all who serve the church with the gift God gives them. God of power and love, your spirit guides the church and makes, a holy, and makes it holy. Strengthen and sustain all who minister. Keep them in health and safety and help each of us to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. Let us pray for all preparing for baptism and reaffirmation of faith that they may respond to God's love and grow in grace all their life. God of power and love, you bless the church with new members, nurture them in faith, bring them to new birth as your children, keep them in company of the saints, let us pray for all who do not know God, that the light of the Holy Spirit may awaken them to faith. God of power and love, may all your children everywhere know your goodness. Help us, your church, to become more perfect witnesses of your grace so that all may see you in us. Let us pray for all in positions of power in government and business that God may guide their hearts and minds so all may live in peace and justice. God of power and love, defender of the poor and oppressed, call to account the rulers of this world so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, and freedom, and a fair share of the goodness of creation. Let us, let us pr pray for all who are sick and dying, all who are homeless or in prison, and for all who suffer from hunger or violence. God of power and love, strength of the weary, hope of the despairing, hear the cries of your suffering children and give us the courage to be agents of your love for them. We pray in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. <laughs> 